Next we will talk about Pythagorean triples. And let's look again at the, the simplest example. This was our first example that we used for the Pythagorean theorem. We said if this side is length 3 and this side is length 4, we can find the hypotenuse. C squared is going to be A squared plus B squared. And the numbers are pretty simple on this one. If A is 3 and B is 4, then we have 3 squared plus 4 squared. And 3 squared is 9 and 4 squared is 16. And 9 and 16 add up to 25. So C squared is 25. So C has to be the square root of 25, which is just 5. And these numbers here, I'm going to scratch out the C there and write a 5. These numbers 3, 4, and 5, those are what we call a Pythagorean triple. Those numbers work together such that the Pythagorean theorem works out. And obviously not all numbers work together that way. For example, 3, 4, and 6 are not a Pythagorean triple. 3 squared plus 4 squared does not equal 6 squared. So if you made a triangle that had sides of length 3, 4, and 6, and you could do that. You could make a triangle, something like that, with sides of length 3, 4, and 6, but it would not be a right triangle. So those numbers 3, 4, 6 are not a Pythagorean triple. And let's look at another example. Uh, suppose we have a triangle like this and we're told that it's a right triangle and this side is length 6 and this side is length 8. Find the hypotenuse. Well again c squared will be a squared plus b squared and a in this case we can call a 6 and b 8. It doesn't matter if one of these were a and one of these were b or the other way around. But I'll say 6 squared plus 8 squared and 6 squared is 36 8 squared is 64, and 36 and 64 add up to 100, which is a perfect square. If c squared equals 100, then c has to be the square root of 100, so c is 10. So we have 6, 8, and 10. Those numbers are also a Pythagorean triple. And notice that these numbers 6, 8, and 10 are multiples of the 3, 4, and 5 that we had earlier. So we had 3, 4, and 5, and doubling each of those gives us 6, 8, and 10. The 6 is twice the 3, and the 8 is twice the 4, and the 10 is twice the 5. So in other words, a 3, 4, 5 triangle scaled up by a factor of 2. So all the sides are twice as long gives us another, another right triangle. And that Pythagorean triple multiplied by a factor of 2 gives us another Pythagorean triple. We could take this and multiply it by a factor of 3 or 4 or 5 and so on and find lots of Pythagorean triples. Numbers of this nature have been known about for a long, long time, well before Pythagoras. I'm going to show you a picture here. This is an ancient clay tablet um, written in cuneiform. And notice this picture, this little diagram on the upper left, there's a triangle there. This is actually a math problem from ancient Babylonia around 17 or 1800 BC. And these people were studying math and writing math problems. They had, had students they were working through. And this tablet contains um, math problems and the solutions. And they're dealing with trapezoids and sections of trapezoids. And at times the solutions involve the use of Pythagorean triples. And if you can read cuneiform, you can read through these solutions. I can't read cuneiform, but there are people who can. And they study these, and they realize that these people were working on these same ideas uh, well before the time of Pythagoras. So even though we know this theorem as the Pythagorean theorem, it's been discovered in other parts of the world by other people as well. Here's another, another tablet from the same uh, time and place. This was in the 1700s BC in Babylonia. And there are problems here dealing with what we call chords of circles. That's chord, C-H-O-R-D. And that, that's not like a musical chord. A chord of a circle is just a segment. If you have a circle like this and a segment that cuts across the circle, we call that segment a chord. And again, if you can read cuneiform as you read through the text here, 
you see that their solution to the problem involves the use of Pythagorean triples. In fact, there's um, there's some other some some stone some carvings and some stones in England dated around 2,500 or 2,600 years before Christ. This is um, hundreds of years older even th than these Babylonian tablets. And the, the markings are arranged in Pythagorean triples. That's 2500 BC. That is a long time ago. That's approximately the same age as the Egyptian pyramids, which are some of the oldest things around. So people were, were thinking about this and working on these ideas a long, long time ago. Let's look at another example problem here that involves a Pythagorean triple. Suppose we had... a uh, a right triangle. Let me fix the end there. A right triangle and we're told the hypotenuse is length 13 and this side is length 5. And we're told to find this side down here which we'll call A. We could call it anything but we'll call it A now. So to find A we know this. We know that A squared plus B squared has to equal C squared. And let's put in the numbers. A we don't know but b is 5, and c we typically call the hypotenuse c. That's 13. So I'll write, uh, well, if we want to just solve for a squared, let's start by just doing the algebra here. I'll subtract b squared from each side. And we get a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of each side and I get a is equal to the square root of c squared minus b squared. Now let's put in the numbers. That's going to be the square root of 13 squared minus 5 squared. And I'll put in those values. 13 squared is 169, 5 squared is 25, and 169 minus 25 is 144. So we have the square root of 144, which works out to be 12. So what we have here is another Pythagorean triple. If a here is equal to 12, we have 5, 12, and 13. Again, Pythagorean triple. All three numbers, integers, Pythagorean triples refer to integers, 5, 12, and 13, that, that work. 5 squared plus 12 squared, it turns out, is 13 squared. So 5, 12, 13 is another fairly commonly known Pythagorean triple.